All right, how many of you run to get the Sunday paper so you can be the first to read the comics? I should have known. If you're a diehard comics fan, you probably buy comic books, too. How many of you doodlers out there fantasize about being the creator or perhaps illustrator of a comic? Well, maybe you'd like to write dialogue or help create the characters' personalities. You That's do right. That. That's if you like to be a writer. If so, you may want to talk to our guest today. Comic book writer Mike Shoemaker is here from Ocean Springs, as well as artist Steve Scott from Biloxi. Both have done work for national comic book publications. Good morning, and welcome to the show. Very nice talented. Nice. Brought some of the, saw some of their let, work. Yeah, let's bring up some of their work while we're talking. I want you to see just how talented these guys are. Look at this. All right, whose comic book is this? Uh, that's the first comic that I wrote for London Night Studios, and uh, Leonard Kirk illustrated the cover to that, and mm -hmm. uh, it was a proud moment for me. Gee, how do you how do you go about making contacts to write a comic book and get? A, how do you do that? Well, you know the old traditional method of going ahead and sending out submissions. You yeah. know, putting a script together, mm -hmm. putting it in the mail, sending it to somebody. That usually gets you a response of some kind. And in this case, it worked. Now, what's the deal? Does an illustrator come up or create a character and then ask you to write dialogue around that character, create a personality? It will vary. If you're making your own character, then of course you're in charge of all of that. Mm -hmm. But if you go to work for a company like London Night Studios, they have their own characters. They want you to write for those characters, mm -hmm. and that's what I do yeah. mostly. No Normally what will happen is uh, they'll call me up when they need some uh, a job drawn mm -hmm. and the script is already done. Mm -hmm. uh, they send me the script, uh, they fax me the script normally um, and uh, I just go ahead and just convert the story to pictures. Yeah, I know that we have some of Scott's work as well. If we go ahead and bring some of that up and give you an idea of what types of illustrations he does, you're working on. You work uh, I, I, I've done, uh, yeah, I do the pencil drawing. Uh, I'm the one that when they send me, you know, me the story, I'm the one that actually draws it from scratch. Here's a sample here. Yeah, that was one of my first published works. That that one I did not do that cover, but I did the book inside. It's uh, Nightman. Uh, the the backdrop artwork was mine. That's uh, interior pages. Uh, it's a TV series right now. That was done for yeah. Malibu yeah, Comics. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. It was done for Malibu Comics, uh, which was later bought out by Marvel. So, so. bunch of folks on the phone line. Fantastic. To to you let's, right now. let's answer some okay. questions. Okay, Nina and Gulfport, go ahead with your question. Hi. Um, years ago, I uh, used to spend a lot of time overseas, and one of the guys that was with me had um, the X-Men mailed to us all the time. So I used to read it all the time, and then I really kind of got out of it. And then recently, a very close friend of mine just gave me the 350th issue that just came out. Mm -hmm. And as while I was reading this, I've noticed that they now make the panels so different, like you. sometimes they're on top of each other and sometimes they're on the left and sometimes you don't know where to go. They, they started making things a little bit more confusing. They, they, they're going for a flashier look, uh, but what's happening this year, a lot of the people, in my opinion, are veering more towards uh, more better stories, uh, story-related items. Uh, they're going more for the, the traditional old panel-to-panel uh, -panel continuity uh, rather than the, the flash splash pages. Uh, some companies are still doing it that way, but the, the products I'm working on more panel to panel. Uh, I, I believe in really showing the story. Yeah, it makes it a little confusing to read. Did you read Oh, it this? really does. Did you read this 350th issue? Uh, no, no, I sure didn't. I, I stopped picking up a lot of the uh, uh, X-Men and Marvel titles, uh, unfortunately. I, I was just a little curious how this guy ended up being, uh, the Eric the Red ended up being Magneto when they just showed yeah. him uh, leaving Nina? with somebody yeah. else. I'm you know like, what you may have to do? <laughs> you may have to show up uh, tomorrow at Gulf Coast Comics. Maybe somebody can answer that question for yeah, you. Yeah, that's We'll tell you a little bit idea. more about that at the end of the segment. Um, there's a Meet the Creators that's, extravaganza that's, that's what tomorrow. That's so, coming up tomorrow. Uh, yeah. Great, right. thank you. Thank you, Nina. Eva in Moss Point, good morning. You're on the air. Uh, yes, uh, I'm Eva Hinkle. I'd like to ask you, I have about five comic books that were back from about 1962. Now, where would you find out how, how much something like that would be worth? Price guides. There are a number of price guides. There are magazines that are devoted to pricing old comic books, mm -hmm. uh, Wizard and Hero are two of those. There are also conventionally available price guides. So what are some of the names, Overstreet? Uh, Overstreet's the best one. Yeah. Uh, it, it's been published since 1970, and it's the one that a lot of people go by as far as mm -hmm. pricing the old comic Can books. Can you maybe stop by Gulf Coast Comics or someplace like yeah. that? And sure, yeah. They'll yeah. help you out with Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Gulf Coast Comics. Yes, yeah. ma'am. We're going to be there tomorrow. All right. Well, thank you so much. Thank you, Eva. Melanie and Biloxi, good morning. You're on the air, Melanie. Hello. How are you? Thanks for the good information, gentlemen. Um, I do have a question. I have some stories that I'm trying to get published now. And uh, what's really the best way to go about that? 
That would be you, Mike. Right. Well, like I said before, one of the more traditional and best methods for doing something like that is to submit it to a specific publisher. You know what kind of genre they produce stories for. If they're your, the stories you produce, then go ahead and stick in an envelope with a cover letter and say, here's what I can do. Do you need me? Uh, the rest okay. of the time, it's also a matter of making contact. Some of the comics jobs I've gotten as a writer have been through my association with other comics artists. Uh -huh. And so just knowing people in the business helps a lot. Go to shows, go to conventions. Just get to meet you whoever know, you can meet, meet associated with right. the business it's, you know, it's the usual method. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Melanie. The wonderful thing about comics, by the way, is that you can live anywhere in the country and, and do work for companies in New York, especially with modern technology. Yeah. Uh, they can email me a script, and I can fax them uh, samples of the drawings before they ever nice? see the, the finished originals. What did you guys read when you were young, very oh, young? Sure. When I was young, very young, Spider-Man. Uh, and also, I liked a lot of the science fiction stuff. Actually, uh, Star Wars is what got me into even in an interest in comics uh, when I was a young kid. Yeah, I was like nine years old when it came Mike's out. over there shaking his head, yeah. Oh, yeah. A lot of that. I also, I mean, I love the Avengers. Spider-Man, like he read. Uh, um, X-Men, that was one of the big ones. When uh, Chris Claremont and John Byrne were involved with that one, it was an outstanding mm -hmm. comic book. Scott, mm -hmm. I have to ask if you were one of those doodlers. Did you sit around in class doodling? Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, I, do I doodle quite a well, bit. Are you supposed to be doing your schoolwork? <laughs> I, I doodle quite a bit. <laughs> Would, suppose you had, uh, you were very good with art. You loved mm -hmm. art, and you had an active imagination. That's a pretty good requirement to do what you guys do. Isn't yeah, it's a, it's, yeah, it's a must. Absolutely. If you're not a daydreamer, then there's a good chance that you're probably not cut out for it. I see. Mm -hmm. I see. Yeah. Uh, Kathy in uh, Beaumont is on the line right now. Kathy, go ahead with your question. Hi. Hi. Hey. Uh, Melanie basically answered my question, but what I was wanting to ask is, I have like. I cannot draw, but I've written like probably close to 30 different stories for comic books. And All I was just, writers out there today. Uh, oh, yeah. I was just wanting to know, you know, a couple of companies individually that I might could send this to. You know, I have no idea where I would send it to. Well, I guess the first question is what kind of stories have you written? Oh, different ones. I've got anything from children's um, to comedy. I've got um, even some... You know, some science fiction, different things. I've just got several different things, you know. Well, this is another situation where you really have to know your market, okay? If you know who you're writing for and you know that you can write those kinds of stories, put it in an envelope and send it to that publisher. Uh, just sitting on the stories, nothing's going to happen to them, of course, so you've got to make sure that you go somewhere with them. And so mail them to publishers who publish the kind of material you like to read. That's some good advice. Mm -hmm. Very okay. straightforward. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Kathy. Sure. All righty, absolutely. So tell us a little bit about this event tomorrow at Gulf Coast Comics. Uh, well, a bunch of creators, uh, uh, mostly illustrators, I, I might be the only writer there, um, are going to be meeting over at Gulf Coast Comics and signing comics and meeting people interested in comic books and uh, just yeah. basically spreading comics awareness. Yeah, we can right. go ahead and bring that information up, let everybody see it. I um, think you're going to get started. It's, probably, it's pretty much an all-day event over at Gulf Coast Comics, which is uh, Pass Road, and Eisenhower Drive, and the shopping center over there in Biloxi. Meet the creators. Mm -hmm. Guys. Great opportunity thanks. for someone interested in that. For all the Thank great you. advice. Thanks sure. for coming. We appreciate hey, it. No problem. Wow. Hey, coming up, a surprise visit for some high school students in the Big Apple. Lifestyle News is next.